So case two is going to be the great rewrite that is going to solve all of the problems of the previous system. So version one of this system was targeted to support seven customers. So um, it was an internal support application that had eventually, we'll say 20 to 30 potential users in terms of uh, business units within this company. And so we started with seven, and there was a three-year project proposal, and after eight years, we still weren't done with the original set of requirements. The brilliant new architect in charge of this system says, well, we're going to do version two. And version two is going to cover the original seven plus 18 more in two years. And after three and a half years, two had been delivered. So things were taking too long, and so why not write another version of version two that's a little bit simpler so that we can take the five people who are yelling at us for the delays on version two and give them something to work with. Total program cost across all three of these was measured in eight figures. So investigation. So what was wrong with version one that got us in this mess in the first place? Well, basically it turned out that the team started with one of the seven customers and based all of the abstractions on that one customer without bothering to validate, well, are these assumptions actually going to be true for the other six? Um, the system mostly worked, but very hard to ship. And there were also many performance and operational problems, primarily due to the team's lack of understanding of, at the time, operational characteristics of uh, J2EE. So the proposal then was, well, let's fix all of these problems. We're going to rewrite this system using a flexible metadata-driven model. So rather than overfit the model, we're going to create a model that can fit anything. And then we're going to get rid of J2EE and, and bring in Spring, because of course that's going to fix all of those other problems. The more flexibility this team demonstrated to the customer base, well, the more flexibility the customer base wanted. It's like, ooh, it can do that? Can it do this too? How about this? And so we kind of went through those cycles for quite a while. Um, there was really no concept whatsoever of, of MVP. So again, really no incremental deliveries of this system. There was this insistence on perfection. I'm not going to start using the software until it does absolutely everything I want it to do in exactly the way I want to do it. And because of that, hey, it can do this, let's make it do this as well, the platform had to keep shipping. So the original idea was well, we'll finish the platform and then everything else is going to be data driven so we won't have to write any more code. Yeah, that didn't happen. So trial, first charge. We'll call it architectural hubris. So the primary architects of the new system believe that they could radically change the architecture from the previous delivery, even though they had zero experience in the new patterns that they were using or the technology stack that they were using. Guilty. Second charge, we have a repeat offender that ignores history. So um, architects and engineers on this particular team either had short memories or were brand new hires, and so the mistakes of history were largely ignored, and in some cases repeated. Guilty. And then the charge of absence of product thinking. So this team was very much working from a project-centric completion mindset. We're going to be done with this, we're going to hand it over and walk away and do something else, rather than a product-centric continuous delivery mindset. And so little was ever completed or delivered. Guilty. 